Senna and Piquet race for the first corner, with Berger, Prost, Alboreto, and the temporarily functional Tom Bay leading the pack behind them. Piquet beat them out of the first corner and led the race. So it was Piquet, Senna, Berger, and Prost. Prost smoothly moved up to take third place. Piquet led, followed by Senna, Prost, and Berger. Prost's pit stop, which was to be his only one, dropped him from third to sixth, and Piquet's, which was to be one of three, dropped him from first to third. He was cooking his tires like tortillas. Senna now led from Berger. But Senna needed new wheels as well. Berger was in the lead, out there selling clothes for Benetton in front of umpteen million viewers. Berger hadn't stopped at all and still led the race, with Prost now second. Berger won his first Grand Prix, which was terrific news for Benetton and good for the sport. The whole race had hinged on tyre stops, of which everyone had made at least one except Berger, who had made none at all. What was he putting in the rubber? I put on, on the left side hard tyres and the right side soft tyres. And I wasn't sure, but after half distance I feel the tyres feel so right, so I was trying to do all the race without pit stop. It was Berger's turn to feel the heady delights of champagne-soaked overalls. This time, Berger got his start right, unlike teammate Alboreto, who virtually stalled. Somehow, everyone got round him, but further back, Alio cannoned off Palmer into the wall. Prost was instantly on the attack, but Berger wasn't having him. Did Prost look threatening? With memories of Portugal, Berger was going all out to pull clear. But what he didn't know was that Prost was already in trouble. With cruel luck, somewhere the McLaren had picked up a puncture. And at once, Bootsen, Senna, Piquet and the rest were going past. Berger, with a comfortable lead, didn't want to lose time in his routine stop, and the Ferrari crew did him proud. Less than seven seconds. Stefan Johansson had made his tyre stop early, and was now second ahead of Senna upholding McLaren fortunes while Alain Prost drove hard but out of the points. The Ferrari crew didn't dare stop worrying until their man was in sight at the end of his final lap, coming home to score Marinello's first win for over two years. But once the chequered flag had waved, in the Ferrari pit the celebrations began. Honda Honor was somewhat redeemed by Senna snatching second place from Johansson virtually at the final corner. The other Honda finisher, local hero Satoru Nakajima, was also in the points, in sixth place. So Ferrari had done it at last, their first win for over two years, after a flawless drive by Berger. Lest new hero Berger should get any ideas above his station, the new world champion decided to deal out a sharp lesson, hurling his Williams into an instant lead. Prost was third, Senna fourth, Alboreto fifth, and Patrese sixth. But Berger didn't want any lessons from Piquet. And as they went down the straight, he stormed up the inside to retake the lead. Berger didn't take long to get into his stride. Behind Piquet, Prost was retaking Senna, and Alboreto, Patrese and Bootsen followed. The Ferrari was already looking invincible, with Berger riding the curbs at the chicane, and by lap six, his lead was six seconds. Prost now had Piquet in his sights, and Senna was being challenged by Alboreto for fourth place, although he was trailing sparks from a piece of fortunately harmlessly dragging bodywork. 
Camera. Piquet was another in braking troubles. Watch his left front brake disc explode. His gear linkage was breaking up too, so he had to stop. And still, the mighty Burgo reeled off the laps in what was clearly one of the most demanding races of the year to score his second win on the trot. Ferrari was certainly back in the winner's circle with a vengeance. Already it seemed that they'd never really been away. And so to the Italian Grand Prix itself, the two Ferraris filling the second row, the McLarens filling the front row as Prost got the jump on Senna at the start of the Monza event. But Senna tried to go back, down the inside and into lead goes Ayrton Senna into the first corner, Prost in second place, then Berger, then Alboreto, so Ferrari's third and fourth. As the rest of the field struggles through the first chicane, Senna in the Monza Great Park, ahead of his rival Prost and the two Ferraris threatening, and Senna coming up towards the end of the first lap, already pulling out a big gap on Alain Prost in second place, and then Gerhard Berger not losing touch in the Ferrari. But Prost was already in engine problems with a weak mixture on the Honda engine. Berger was closing in at this point, about to snatch second place from him. In the meantime, Prost had been radioing back to his pit that he was going to come in. Probably it was terminal. Berger snatched second place and the Italian fans, the Tifosi, went absolutely berserk. Fantastic sight for them, the blood-red Ferrari in second place after all their problems. Senna still leading the Italian Grand Prix. McLaren driver then made that mistake. He tried to go past John Louis Schlescher, but he got it wrong. Gerhard Berger on his way to victory in the Italian Grand Prix on the last lap, but Michele Alboreto at this point was closing in. It was a Ferrari 1-2, and Alboreto had just set the fastest lap, so the crowd were really tingling on their feet, cheering and shouting. Fantastic. First and second at Monza. The first time there's been a Ferrari victory at Monza since 1979 in Jody Schechter. Berger starts from a brilliant pole position ahead of Fisichella, Hakkinen and Schumacher. Schumacher makes a terrific start, as does Irvine. Hakkinen down to fourth. Villeneuve passed Frenson and Irvine, who seem to touch. Frenson and Irvine in trouble, possibly from that earlier incident. Berger pulling out a gap over Fisichella, Schumacher and Hakkinen. Berger back on top, 12 seconds between him and 6th place. Howhill's fortunes have changed, passing Herbert Sauber. Berger with a huge lead over Fisichella. Schumacher closing in on Fisichella. As Benetton prepare for the leader's first stop. Berger right on the marks. Fisichella now leading Mika Hakkinen. Gerhard Berger bearing down on him and through. Only ten seconds between first and third. Gerhard Berger in front and very much in control. Jean Alesi finding an alternative route. His tyres must surely be well past their best. Magnussen's engine failing on lap 27. Alesi in his last stop, dropping back to eight. Berger tightening his grip with over 18 seconds on Fisichella. Michael Schumacher a distant third. Villeneuve spins out, attempting to retake Jarno Trulli. Berger answers the call of his pit. A controlled stop. Back on track behind the new leader, Fisichella, due for his last stop very soon. Villeneuve's attempts clearly went very wrong. Gerhard quickly back into the lead. Fisichella's rear tyre has let go. It's a long way to his pit. The home crowd happy as a fortunate Schumacher moves up into second. Fisichella struggling. Into the pits, but just look at that rear tyre. A determined effort from the Italian. Michael Schumacher's final pit stop. Gary Anderson has seen something. Fisichella out after a gritty performance. 
Berger just four laps remaining leads Schumacher. Hakkinen third with Jano Trulli in an excellent fourth. A fantastic return for Berger and a magnificent display from the Austrian. The Benetton crew cheering him home. Schumacher second scoring valuable points. Fisichella hitches a lift from Michael Schumacher. But it's Berger's day. Uh, Giancarlo made a mistake in the second chicane, huh? And I could overtake him straight away. And uh, yeah, it just works. Everything works together. Gerhard Berger scoring a maximum 10 points on his comeback. But it's Schumacher's second that will have most bearing on the championship. Hakkinen in a well-deserved.